goodness, this looks... Hey, 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 everybody. I guess if you guys aren't doing anything right now, hope you all can join me for a quick update on a few things. Um, and I kind of just want to <clears throat> share some things. I haven't gone live in a very long time. <coughs> I do apologize for that. But um, I'm going to give people a little time to get in here. It's a little warm. Mm. But we just finished the Charter Commission meeting, and <coughs> oh, excuse me, we're going to meet again in August. And I implore you, if you are a resident in the city of South Fulton, for you to get engaged and involved and informed we there's a lot going on right now and it appears that it appears one way but if you understand how the charter works it's working the city is working and operating the way it should um, should there be some changes to the charter potentially so as a charter commission we are to make suggestions um, to the state legislators and that's what we are convening to do at our meetings but the structure of the charter um, essentially, you know, most likely won't change. So it will continue to be a city council led um, charter <coughs> city rather and a um, mayor, as it has been said before, it is a weak mayor um, position where the mayor pretty much carries out the vision of the city council. That's how it's always been. Um, and that more than likely will not change. So I implore you all, I'm going to try to keep you as informed as I can. Um, I was asked to get, get back into doing Facebook Lives. I kind of shied away from it. I actually started really enjoying <laughs> living in our new home that we purchased in District 3. And um, we did just finally get... Um, Oh, I, won't, I won't share that detail yet because I need to make sure we get this in our hands before I tell you a little bit more about what's what's to come. But um, please get involved. Please know that there are some really good council members we have right now that are trying to do <clears throat> the right thing um, for the constituents and for the city. And should you you know ever doubt how the city structure works, it is a city council-led city and the city manager should be running the city um, and so we should not have the discord that is going on right now where the mayor is suing the city council I think that is absolutely absurd those are our tax dollars that can go towards meaningful things that the city really needs and I just think it's a waste of time I think we really need to um, hold everyone accountable that has been elected whether you decided to elect uh, this current mayor because you wanted you thought you wanted something new or whether you decided that um, you just weren't sure what you wanted to do and um, you just didn't vote because I can tell you that we did have a lot of people that just did not vote and it is costing us dearly. Elections matter. Elections are costly and elections have consequences. And I read some of these comments and I'm telling you some of you don't know how the city government works and just because you don't know it doesn't mean that you because you make a statement it should work the way you think it should. Okay, That's not how the law works. All right, It's like getting pulled over you're going uh, 85 in the 55 zone and you're telling the cop, well, I think I should be able to do it because I have to go to work and I'm late. That's not going to fly. That's not how the law works. And yes, we need prayers, Demetrius. We need a lot of prayers and we need a lot of engagement. Um, 
if you haven't seen the mayor's newsletter, I'm I'm going newsletter. I'm going to share it with you because he put some things in a newsletter that were pertaining to a personnel matter. And you know, I look at the city government like corporate America. If you, Teresa or Demetrius, were were in HR and you had a situation you were dealing with, and that situation got leaked in the form of a newsletter and was sent out to everyone in the company, what do you think would happen? I mean, what do you think should happen? That is exactly what the mayor did. And then he went and called the media to talk about how he was firing the city attorney. He has no power to do that. And he did that in front of Camelot. Camelot is not a representation of the city. I want everyone to understand that is not the representation of our city. Camelot has its problems, but it's private property, you guys. And the city, when he was the council member and he had the power to do something about Camelot, he did nothing. <laughs> he did absolutely nothing. And so now to see this grandstanding and getting in front of Camelot and I'm going to do this and I'm going to have the city attorney walked off and it is absolutely absurd that he is using his time this way and he's causing our city to look discombobulated and it looks really bad that he's in this position and he has no self-awareness. So tonight, as a commission, we did make the recommendation that he be removed from the, the commission because per the charter, the commission, no elected official can appoint themselves and or be on a commission or board. But he appointed himself. And I find that he does these type of things because he thinks he can do them and get away with it. And I think that's, a, that's just a poor use of time as an elected official. It really is. We have so many things that we can accomplish out here. We have so many things that we can be doing with our city. Than trying to find loopholes in the charter. To, to make it work for our motives and motivation. This is why I feel anyone that supported him wanted him in office. And just because you don't like the structure and the way the city charter is, doesn't mean that you just put yourself in office so that you can manipulate, try to manipulate things for your personal gain. Because I'm going to tell you, some of us are not going to have it. We're not going to allow it. We're not going to have it. We're going to speak up. We are tired of a select group on next door. They get out here and put all these false allegations and accusations out here. And y'all can have that. Y'all can have that. It is not going to happen the way people are projecting that the city is failing because the council is. This is the first city council that's working in tandem together. And that's what you want. If you want it to live in a city where the mayor is a mayor-led city and the mayor can fire and hire, you need to move to the city of Atlanta or you need to move to Fairburn. Those are the only two cities in Fulton County that are structured that way. And I realize, listen, we have a lot of people who are not from here. You, you flew here, okay? And you have no idea that we have a county tax we have a city tax you have no idea where taxes are coming from okay you have no idea probably what district you live in and I understand that but back to my point about what was in the newsletter there there probably was an HR issue but he nobody has the power to take a personnel issue that's under a current investigation and publicize that Nobody. That is immediate grounds for termination in corporate America. And he should have better decorum than that. He has actually put the city in further risk for ongoing litigations. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want my tax dollars tied up in litigations. And so now he's suing the city, council members, 
Who's going to pay for that? Do you want to pay for it, Christopher? Because if you do, I encourage you to make a donation to the mayor's litigation fund. We have other work to do. There's more to a city than calling <laughs> the media and saying, I'm going to sue the city council. I mean, it is absurd. So I am imploring, I'm asking everyone, I'm letting y'all know I'm back. I haven't done Facebook Live in a while, but apparently I need to come on and let you all know what is real and what's fake. What should occur and what should not. What is lawful and what is not. Because it is very clear, based on some comments, that a lot of a lot of us don't know. And listen, I, sometimes I need to have counsel. What I need to find out is that really does that what that mean? Is that what that mean? And just because it may not have all of the words and terminology there, doesn't mean you make it mean what you want it to mean. <laughs> That's not how this works. So I implore you, Teresa, Demetrius, Christopher. I don't, I, everybody needs to get involved. Everybody needs to get engaged. Everybody needs to stop sitting back and allowing these certain group of people to try to make this city into something that it's not. I, we are raising kids here. We're invested. We have purchased land and homes. We are wanting to bring businesses here. Christopher, let me help you out, sir. Okay? If there is a police cover-up, you, your mayor doesn't have the power to put that in his newsletter. It, there's an investigation. And per the charter, he violated section 2.15. So I'm going to tell you to go and read section 2.15. Okay? Because apparently he didn't realize that he violated the charter again. Who can, why do we want a mayor that's a whistleblower? Who does that? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. So what if there is corruption? It will come out and let's say it can and will be dealt with. But it's not the mayor's job to prematurely put that information in a newsletter while there's an ongoing investigation. If he worked in corporate America, he would know that is, that is not decorum. It's premature. It's a knee-jerk reaction. And it further harms the city from being liable and at risk for further and continuous ongoing litigations. But let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the investigations he's under. Let's talk about the misuse of the P card. Let's talk about the fact that the former mayor. William Bill Edwards never used his P-card. Let's talk about the current mayor who is using a P-card and is not turning in receipts. And again, I'm going to bring this back to corporate America. I have a P-card. I can spend $50,000 a month if I want on my P-card, but I best to turn in some receipts. Or if I don't, I'm terminated and I'm arrested because that's criminal. So if you like it, Christopher, you like having a mayor that is spending your tax dollars and not providing receipts, let me hear that. Let me see how you feel about that. Because that, to me, is what we should be going to the media about. That is public information that has come out at a recent council meeting. And this is why I'm telling you all, we need to be involved. He's violated the charter more than anyone that I've ever seen, but let's not forget that he brought the hearing against the former mayor and Helen Willis, and nothing became of that. Nothing became of that. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to prove nothing when he was a council member, and now he is at the forefront and the center of a bunch of mess. And I'm telling you all, I'm sick of it. You all should want better. You all should want more professionalism to be representative of us as a city. When he gets in front of the media, I cringe. I almost don't even want to watch it because it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And again, 
I'm all for being a whistleblower. But let me say this. I'm either going to be a whistleblower or an elected official. The two don't go together. Why get in government and try to be a whistleblower? I mean, let's, let's just start right there. This is why I haven't run for office. Because I like being in the position that I'm in. Because I can come here and tell y'all what I want y'all to know. And it's always going to be truth based with facts. I'm not going to blow the whistle on anything just to blow the whistle. That's a waste of my breath, air, and time. Period. So why become an elected official and spend all your time trying to blow the doggone whistle? Why? And Michael, I will agree with you. You can do both if you're doing it both for the right reasons. But every time he's on the media, it's about Camelot. And y'all, it's nothing the city can do about Camelot. Y'all who live in homes you have purchased in a HOA, if you are renting, your landlord is responsible for making sure that whatever conditions that you all have worked out are up to par. If the electricity get cut off, you can't go run electricity in your home and rig it and get it for free. That's criminal. That's criminal. Okay? And yes, they cut the power off because someone was utilizing Georgia Power's electricity in Camelot for free. Not only were they using it for free, but they rigged it, which caused it to be a hazard for everybody that's living over there. And that could have caused further damage and harm if anyone's apartment caught on fire. Or, or the condos. Uh, okay, so if it caught on fire, Georgia Power could have been liable. So they cut the power off. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Because, to be quite honest with you, find somewhere else to stay. That's literally what has to happen. It is not the city's responsibility to govern private property. They can't. Lawfully and legally. And if he really wanted something to be done about Camelot, why didn't he do it when he had the power to do so? Why now? Why now? Why are we doing all this grandstanding? Camelot been Camelot since it's been there. And yes, the conditions have gone down. And yes, they sanctioned the owners. There are things that they have done and that they can do. But there's nothing that the city of South Fulton can do for private property. So why waste time to make People who don't know and understand how this works think that the government can. Why do that to these people? And, 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 and when it comes time for things to get done, it still won't get done. It won't get done. It absolutely won't get done, you guys. Let's move on. So again, we need to, if you want to hold someone accountable, let's, let's really think about what kind of city we want. I don't want a city where the, the figurehead, which is the mayor, is always on the media suing people and talking about he's going to fire this person and y'all blowing the whistle. I don't, I don't want that. If you want that, then that explains why he potentially could be in office because of a lack of poor judgment, in my opinion. But he definitely is not ready for this job. It is very clear. And he has once again violated the charter. It was a violation tonight, and we cleared that up on the commission. And we read him the actual statement from the charter and his response was oh well I didn't mean to do that listen if y'all gonna run for office you should know the charter and it's sad because he was a council member first I would think he would know the charter don't wouldn't you think that wouldn't you think before you run for office you would understand the document that governs your position or 
Are, are we just out here running for things and then we just going to figure it out? Is that what we're doing? So I'm glad you asked. What would I like to see? I would like for elected officials to do what they've been elected to do according to the charter that governs the city. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see us stop calling the media and putting out false information, drawing negative attention to the city. That's what I would like to see. Because developers are watching. A lot of people are watching this city. And the city can be great. The city is in great financial position. We don't, you know, the city um, has, in my opinion, and this is not really my opinion, this is a fact, when the city was turned over, it was a very healthy city. There was, there was millions of dollars that the city has. The taxes actually went up for the county, not the city. And so if, you're, if you were like me and you got your tax assessment, then I was a bit caught off. But we did get a bigger home. We bought, you know, more, we bought more property, so that makes sense. And you're right, Michael, the mayor isn't new to this. He was a councilman for four years. Why are some of us sitting back and allowing this to go on? I, I get making comments on Facebook. I'm, what I'm not going to do is go back and forth with people, especially people who don't know the charter. First of all, I'm going to let you know what it is. And if you still want to argue, you'll be arguing by yourself because I'm not going to do that. But as Michael says, he knows the charter. I don't know if he does. Because, Michael, let's, let's keep in mind, I can go back and find the video where he said that he wanted to keep the city as a weak mayor position. Now, why would you go run for the mayor and then try to grab some power? <laughs> why would you do that? Nothing's changed. Why would you do that? What is the motive and intent? He's on record saying that. He didn't want Bill to have no power. Everybody hated Bill so much. It was, it was just baffling to me. Bill Edwards is one of, still one of the most respected individuals. Has decorum. He's a leader. Did not spend his P card on nothing. I mean, so... I don't know what more you all thought. I don't know what y'all thought when y'all, some of you all were saying, we want a new mayor. But you got one. Huh. Oh, you got a new one. Now the question is, did you understand what you were asking for? Is this the new that you really wanted? Is this what's best for the city? And he was. Bill was the only experienced person. And experience matters. I don't want you to take me to a surgeon and it's his first year on the job. Please don't. Miss me. <laughs> miss miss me, please. Now you can send me to a, I can go to a car salesman and, you know, I may be able to work with him. I've been in pharmaceutical sales now almost 20 years. Okay? And sometimes, you know, you might need some, some fresh ideas. I, I can, I can, I can maybe see how that is applicable but not in government you guys it is very <laughs> critical that you all get to know people I spent the last I would say 10 years doing that and some of these elected officials I would sit down and have dinner I would break bread with them because I trust them I got to know them I ain't on nobody's payroll nobody can ever pay Daphne off because I make enough money and have enough character. Well, that's not even necessary. I do what I do in this community absolutely for free because I love what I do. I love advocating for change and for what's right and for, you know, people who really just don't understand how things work. I really have enjoyed doing that. And it all stemmed from the slider crimes and I wanted us to be safe and I was sick of being, seeing women being a target and I, I decided to do something about it. And you're right, uh, Jay, Keon Render, Bill financially wouldn't have to use the P-card and this is another point. I'm glad you brought that up. I mentioned, you know, some people were saying it doesn't matter that the mayor doesn't, the current mayor doesn't have a job. 
I personally think now that his P card has been confiscated, okay, he can't use P card anymore. It has been confiscated by the city manager. There is an ongoing investigation about this. You all should be concerned about it, okay? <laughs> That's now that they made the news. Now you know. Let's look at this. The city council could have called the media. They could have called the media, and they could have put it. But ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody has time for that. And the thing, Jay Render, that you don't understand about Bill is, Bill made a conscious choice not to use his P-card. As a matter of fact, he said he didn't use his P-card as a commissioner. What does that tell you about his character? All these inconsistencies about Bill was taking money was all a flat-out, bald-faced lie. And some of y'all fell for the okie doke some of y'all fell for it. The people who put this man in office. Y'all fell for the okie doke. And we need something new. We need change. No, y'all need to change. Y'all need to change. <laughs> some of y'all need to get from behind these computers. Computers. And y'all need to change. Y'all need to find out information for yourself. And get it and read it because reading is fundamental and some of y'all if you don't understand it ask a question there's nothing wrong with asking a question but there is something definitely wrong for making an assumption read the information for yourself stop getting on next door and letting these people come on here and tell y'all what they want y'all to know and then you get the amen corner and the, the you get everybody Oh yes, and then this what he did, and he bringing warehouses. Ain't nobody brought warehouses. The only industrial area that the city of South Fulton has is Fulton Industrial. People, where where have y'all been? Do you know your own city? <laughs> that when you get on South Fulton Parkway, do you realize you go through three cities? Do you realize that? Do you know where you are? Do you know where you're going to? Do you understand that you all have been bamboozled? Some of y'all. And you know, somebody told me a long time ago, a mentor, Daphne, if you are the smartest person in your circle, you need some new friends. And I'm just going to let y'all know, some of y'all need some new friends. Some of y'all need a new circle. Some of y'all need a whole new ge geometrical shape of people to be around because you have allowed yourselves to be hoodwinked and bamboozled. And it gets deeper than what I can go into right now. And I, don't, I have a lot more that I want to let you all know. So what I'm going to do is just let you know that I'll be back. I don't know which day. I don't know if I can let y'all know ahead of time. But there's a lot that's going on. And I personally want you all to know. Because you, you clearly don't know. Y'all need to start looking at the council meetings. They're on Zoom now. Y'all need to start questioning things. And stop, you know, taking one little sound bite. And then, you know, jumping on that bandwagon. I have asked for open records. So as soon as I get my information and my receipts, I'm coming back to give you all further details and information about the investigations that the current mayor is under. Okay? That I will promise you that I will do. But we are better than this. We need to start proving that not only to ourselves, but to the people who have unfortunately been succumbed to all of these erroneous press releases, conferences, whatever you want to call it. And I prefer that if we're going to have a press conference, let's do it in front of City Hall. I mean, let's just be neutral. We don't have to do it in front of any district. Let's, when, when, let's, let's. Let me, let me ask you this. When Mayor Dickens has a press conference, is he in front of Bowen Homes? Where is he? And I don't have no, I don't have, it's no knock. I'm just telling y'all. It, it does matter. <laughs> it matters. Why are we trying to make it seem like we're rescuing somebody? Them people have been in Camelot succumbed to what they wanted to be a part of. They decided to rent from these landlords. And that's private property. Let it go. Today. There's nothing that can be done. 
They have their own HOA. So what they need to do is get on that board and decide how they want to run their property. Because they have an HOA, y'all. Y'all know how HOAs work. I left a, a community. We left the community with an HOA because we wanted autonomy. Meaning we wanted to do what we want to do. <laughs> we didn't want nobody telling us what to do. So that's what we did. That was what I told my agent. Find me a property in the city of South Fulton with land where I can build a pool. And I don't have to share my pool with everybody else. And my pool will be working because I'm going to fix my pool. Okay? I, that's what we wanted. If y'all want Camelot to rise, then go to the HOA meetings. See, and he doesn't, if, if he doesn't understand how it works, then here lies the problem. It starts from the top. We've got to stop putting out this false information and narrative that Camelot, the city don't want to help Camelot. The city can't help any other community with the HOA. So why would the city help Camelot? Answer me that. Think that's how you all need to look at Camelot. It is the exact same community type as if you live in a community with an HOA. The HOA governs the communities. That's what Camelot is. Tanya says it baffles me how little people know about where they live and what's going on. It does. And Teresa says, let's know, let's know what you are talking about at a press conference. No time for emotions. Well, and so the question is, where does the mayor live if he doesn't live in Camelot now? We know that they had to leave. I mean, so that I mean, y'all, we can go on and on and on. I don't care, but I really want to come here to let you all know that we are doing some work in the Charter Commission. There is an opportunity for citizens to give feedback. As soon as the clerk sends out all of our email addresses, because you may want to reach out to all of us, I don't know how um, that will particularly work outside of what was discussed tonight. And you can go look at the, the meeting video um, to expect, know what to expect, because there will be different avenues. We're trying to figure out how do we reach the elderly that's not um, you know, on the internet so that we can try to get as much feedback from citizens that we potentially can. But this is your government. This is your government. You all should know how it works. You should know this. And if you don't, I have made a post about the Charter Commission and a link for the Charter. I will repost it again. We are covering chapter by chapter section by section to make recommendations and John and Jay what is your first name I'm just gonna call you Jay I wish we could focus more on what the city is going to look like in 2050 well Jay I wish we can focus on what the city will look like in 2022 because if we really have if we really think about it the city has so much potential it, it is in my opinion, un it's unrealistic to think that the city can be like the city of Atlanta overnight. It just can't. I mean, <laughs> but if we put our trust in our council members, if we work with our council members to actually help them understand what type of development. Some of y'all were mad about the Popeyes coming to District 2 over by the New Publix. But a lot of you didn't know that Hank Aaron's family owns own that and I actually think that's not bad I mean I actually wish we could have maybe had a conversation with them and said hey can you bring a Dunkin I mean not Dunkin Donuts but I think they also own the franchise of um, Krispy Kreme I personally think a Krispy Kreme would have been fantastic over there so I, I really hate that I didn't know that those conversations were going on to make those recommendations but I can tell you that the Sandtown Community Association is very heavily involved and I just think that we all need to you know before we put something out and say yeah we shouldn't we shouldn't have another Popeyes <laughs> I mean it's actually not a bad thing it's not a bad thing so it's coming and um, you know I may I've changed my diet so I can't say that I'll be there getting any chicken or biscuits but you know if they got a salad I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> you know um, I'll get a salad but um, 
that place is going to be packed. I mean, it's going to be packed. And let's just face it, y'all. We like fried chicken. We do. Now, we like it. And we like some red beans and rice. And we like it. Could we do something different? Yes. We actually tried to bring our restaurant slush um, in that area. And we were told that Publix did not want um, to have live music. Um, a live uh a space that played live, live music. Well, we played live music at Slush. So that's how our Slush ended up on Edgewood because that's just where my husband and, and, and his partners decided to have it. But we tried. <laughs> we tried to bring it to South Fulton and we're still trying to bring um, other businesses out here. But I can tell you that some of what's happening will deter people from bringing businesses out here and they'll just take them somewhere else. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I mean, that's the bottom line. And let me tell you this, the purchases, you cannot use a P card without providing receipts. So, I don't care what the purchases were. You can't use a P card like it's your own personal credit card anywhere. As I mentioned earlier, let me try that on my job. And when it's time to reconcile my expense report and I don't have receipts, oh, I'm walked out the door. Let me tell those people I don't have the receipts. I'm fired. That's criminal. You don't spend money without providing proof as to what you spent. Now, if y'all think that's right, then he, I'm just going to say it. Here lies the problem. That is not their money. That's how y'all know we went through a P card assessment a few years ago and brought out the one of the council members bought Victoria's Secret on the card. Y'all, if y'all don't know how to request an open records request on P card spending, I suggest that you do it yourself. Don't take my word for it, but I got the receipts. There are some other people that are under investigation right now for misuse of a P-card. It's criminal. <laughs> Please understand what I'm saying. Don't get, so if you want to blow the whistle, blow the whistle on that. Blow your own whistle on yourself. See, you, you shouldn't pick and choose which whistle you blow, in my opinion. Because as the Bible says, a sin is a sin. One isn't worse than the other. And that would say, well, we're not running the city like the Bible, but I'm just saying, if we're going to blow the whistle, blow the whistle on yourself. You cannot make a purchase on a government card without providing receipts to let the government know, oh, I just didn't go on a shopping spree. This is what I bought for XYZ. It has to be an approved expense. It has to be an, an approved expense and they have a budget. And they have a budget. Like I told y'all, I have a budget. If, if I go over my budget, I ask my boss for some money. They don't give me more money though. My boss, I know she has the money so I'll go ask her, hey, I'm out of budget so can you help me? It's called being responsible. For some of us, so y'all don't play with nobody's P card if y'all don't understand how it works. Don't get in these positions and then say, oh, I didn't know it worked that way. That's, that's, ignorance of the law is no defense. <laughs> By no means. So please, let me help some of you out. If you're planning to run for office, please read the charter. Understand the government, how it works, and understand if you don't know how to use P card, don't use it. If you feel like you got a spending problem, don't use the government's P card. I personally think it is a direct reflection on someone's character to use something and not justify why it was used. I think there, that's an integrity issue. We may disagree on this, but... There's, there's a little more to this, and like I said, when I get my open records request back, I will come back and give you all an update on that. But there's a lot of investigations going on. We've got to get down to the business of 
What are we bringing to the city to make it evolve? What can we do to, you know, I would love to see, and I don't know if you all have seen this, but Clayton County, if I'm not mistaken, they have a really cool water park. I would love to see something like that come to the city of South Fulton at one of the parks that we have because, um, I mean, I think it's it's it would be really nice to have that here. We shouldn't have to keep traveling all over the city um, or the or, you know the state to go to do things that we could potentially do here. So it's my understanding that you know we still have some work to do. People are trying to blame the council for Wolf Creek. Y'all don't understand what's happening with Wolf Creek. Well, I'm gonna tell you to go do your research before I tell you. And if you still don't understand what's happening at Wolf Creek, then I will come back and let you understand it. But it has nothing to do with your city council. There are some things that need to take place. And I really have been enjoying going to the Mableton House for concerts. And I would love to see Wolf Creek operate in that manner where we don't have to be confined to using someone else's vendors. I love bringing my own food and drinks to the Mableton House and enjoying the concert in a covered area, even when it rains, when we're sitting in the tables. I love that. I would love to see something happen with Wolf, Wolf Creek as well. Um, but if you don't know what's happening, don't, don't put it out there that the council isn't doing anything about Wolf Creek. Because it's not true. It's simply not true. And this is how we end this belief. Half of what you hear and or read and more of what, half of what you see, but believe more of what you read. And I mean, what I mean by that is read, because some people are reading, but apparently they don't know how to read for understanding. And they have a problem with interpreting the words. Like, I've, I've seen it. Some people will read something. I'm like, how did you get that out of that one sentence? I'm baffled. I'm baffled. And I also feel like we need to bring ethics and civics back into education. Because it's clearly, it's, 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 I mean, it's, government is missing. We're missing the mark on, this is how I think it should work. Well, that's not the, that's not the law. We have to go based on how the charter is written so that we are making sure that they are governing themselves accordingly to that. Not how they think it should work. And if you remember, well, I ain't going to go back, honey. Listen, y'all got who y'all voted for. And all I'm going to tell you is elections have consequences. And as, as so many people said, we'll just put them in the office and hold them accountable. Prove it. When? I, I haven't seen anyone hold him accountable. But I can tell you that I'm back. I can tell you that this is unacceptable. There are some things that we just should not continue to just let it roll off our backs and act like we don't care about it. It's your city. It is your city. Get involved. Get engaged. Stop letting certain trolls get on social media and and tell you around election time who to vote for. Because some of these people don't pop up until there's an election. And they don't even live in the city. Hell, they don't even live in the county. And they telling y'all who to vote for. And y'all falling for it. Here's what's sad. No, and know thy neighbor. Get to know your neighbors. Get to know your neighbors. I really would like to know, and I'm going to end it on this. What do you all think we need to do to help everyone understand the truth from what's fake? Do we need to have, I really think, well, because COVID, the cases are rising again. So I was thinking we could meet at certain restaurants and, you know, have a fellowship. Because I really would like to get to know some of y'all. <laughs> Um, some of y'all I would like to get to know. And I'm sure, you know, we don't always, we're not always going to agree. I get that. But we can be respectful. I feel like as a community, we need to commune so that we can all 
you know, get together and really talk about what we really want to see happen in our city as a collective because there's a lot of division right now. There's a lot of discord, discord, and there's a lot of people that only surfaced when it was election time. And I'm telling you that because they tried to get in this group and they were denied. This group is not a group where we're just going to get in here and bash people. I will share information that I think you should, you know, that's important, especially around safety. But we are not safe when we have elected officials in office that have ulterior motives. We ain't safe. And that's, I meant to say it like that. We ain't safe. We're not safe. And it doesn't mean we run to the media and we put the spotlight. It means we all need to collectively Call it out, first of all. Make sure that people understand what's going on. And then take action. When I noticed that there were charter violations, I emailed the council and told them, y'all need to do something about this. We have a charter for a reason. Y'all can email the council. Are you emailing them or are y'all getting this? And let me tell y'all something else I've noticed, and it's really bad, is people have been bashing council members. They're... Council members are out of town trying to deal with the death of a family member. And these people are still trying to bash council members. It is deplorable. Some of the things that I have been seeing. And so I don't even like to get on next door. Because I've, I've tried to become a changed woman. And not go there. And just keep, you know, just keep my femininity. <clears throat> and not be emotional. And respond in a very bad manner. So I just have been ignoring a lot of things. But I'm glad people are showing us in writing who they are. That's one thing next door will tell you. Who people really are. And whose team they're really on. And what side of right. There's only one side of right there is. But some people are trying to make you all think. That. They're on the side of right, and they just be so wrong. I ain't never seen so many people be loud and wrong in my life. Will get on here and post these videos and be loud and wrong. Just as wrong. And me and we, we are not safe with elected officials. There was a lot going on with these recent elections. With the, you know, they were putting people in office, trying to get people out of office because they didn't even have the power. To, to pass legislation. So they're going to put people here. And all over, all over the county. To try to get them elected. So they can have. Because they don't they don't ticked everybody off. They done made all the. You know they, done, they just caused all kinds of confusion with their colleagues. And they haven't passed not one piece of legislation. If y'all didn't catch who that was. Then I'm going to tell you. Y'all ain't been paying attention. <laughs> you have not been paying attention. But thank God. That the county does not just involve the city of South Fulton. When you decide to run for a county position. You got to understand how borders and boundaries work. And some of these people really thought they were going to get a county position out. Just from the city of South Fulton voters. I mean, do y'all know basic math? Do you know how big the county is? I, I just, I, I just didn't understand. I just didn't understand. <laughs> but they understand it because it didn't work. How about that? None of the plots and ploys and Lord, y'all, they was just, and God this and God that. Listen, I, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed by all the shenanigans that's going on. I'm not. But I, I want to be able to come here and give you all the facts like I used to. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to commit to doing that with all that I have going on. And it is, it is absolutely, Priscilla, you nailed it. Priscilla said, true, the next door post about city council 
and more is atrocious and just plain sad. Many are just pushing lies and dirty gossip, and they are. And look, I'm going to tell you, if anybody should be sued, it's the people on, on next door. Hey, babe. Babe. If I was, if they had called my name out in any of those posts, oh, honey, I'm lawyered up. I'm lawyered up. You would have to keep my name out your mouth. And I mean, they were just nasty to Bill. I mean, it was just nasty. It was disgustingly nasty. Some of the things that were said, and we, we just can't let it, we just can't let this happen. We, we can't control people and we can't stop them, but the way we can make a difference and a change is stop sitting back and letting people cause further hurt, harm, and damage to our city's image. I love where I live. I love the home we've purchased because I know if I purchased this home anywhere else, it'd be $2 million. We can't afford a $2 million home. I love walking out in the morning and seeing the deers in my yard. We've got bird feeders everywhere. I love that I'm only five minutes from the airport. I love certain aspects of this city. I would love to see more growth. I would love to see more economic development. I would, and I believe that it's coming. But what I don't like is the, some of these people who are nasty, they don't understand government, they can't speak on a fifth, fifth grade level, they're, they're, they're literally angry about uh, an elected official that had a lot of experience and really Bill Edwards had nothing but good intentions for this city. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. And he lives, he's a taxpayer in the city. He's not renting a home. He's a taxpayer. He's been paying taxes in the city. He's invested in other words in the city. And some of y'all wanted something new. Well, you got it. And he likes to stand in front of one place. And that's not a representation of the city. Camelot is not a representation of this city. And it needs to stop. Hey, Council Member Sebastian, JC, JC Council Council. Member Sebastian says, and most of those making noise and false accusations admitted that they never wanted the city, so they are still trying to tear it down. It's absolutely crazy. And so just move. <laughs> Leave. I mean, a minute ago, it was a buyer's market. I don't know what it's like now. But don't. Don't stay here and do that. I mean, just leave people. If you don't like it, like I said, if you want a mayor-led city, go to Fairburn or at the city of Atlanta. If you don't like the city and you mad about it, then it's not going to change. Leave. I've been here when it was unincorporated. And I actually like it like it is. Can it be improved? Yes. But that's with anything. That's like, you know, saying you work for a perfect company. Nothing is perfect. It takes time. If y'all think you can build a city in five years and it be perfect, y'all are crazy. <laughs> It takes more time. Look at the city of Atlanta. Use that as your benchmark. It takes time. It takes time to build families. It takes time to build communities. But I feel like if we can all come together, you're going to have those little stragglers out there and they're going to always, you're going to always have naysayers and you're going to always have those type of people that you described, Council Member um, J.C. Sebastian. I get that. That comes with the territory. But if we can become more of a collective, a group of people that have a majority of the same wants and needs, I feel like we can create the city that we can be proud of for our you know, families now and years to come. Some of us are raising kids out here. Some of you want to have kids. Some of you may not. 
and you just want a peaceful place to live. I can honestly tell you this city is one of the safest cities in Fulton County. That is something to be proud of. It wasn't that way. This group was formed because we had some of the highest crime. The group's name was initially High Crime in South Fulton. I mean, I got dinged for that. I was told to stop talking about the crime. And I didn't care about what the people were telling me. I kept on talking about it. Because I wanted something to be done about it. And y'all, look at where we are. We're in such a better place than we were before it became a city. And if you look at how the chips fell, in the original regime, we had a chief put in place, Chief Metals is phenomenal. He's done a great job of building a really good police force. Does it have some issues? I'm sure it does. I don't know a perfect police department. If you know of one, put it in the group. But we can't bash the people who wake up every day to get out here to protect and serve us. And then, because we're not versed in resolving our own conflict, we call in 911 and telling them to come to the house. You got to pick your battles. Okay? Because in my opinion, if you don't like the police, Lord forbid, don't call them. If we can resolve our own issues, we wouldn't have to call the police. Have you thought about that? But I'm not going to get on that tangent. All I'm saying is, we are much safer. We have some really good things going on in the city that has evolved because of the initial council and mayor and we want that to continue but it can't and won't if you're making a press release and putting things in newsletters that should not be done <laughs> and I mean it, I mean we just need to know better hey Beth Beth says I remember when Brookhaven was always in the news with turmoil in the beginning and we you know I don't know if we should expect this I I personally was not um I think initially, Beth, we didn't know who to vote for, so a lot of us just went for, again, in that initial round in the, in the beginning, um, I don't think people were involved enough to know who to vote for, but I know for a fact, um, by getting to know a lot of elected officials, whether it's on the state, the county, the city, and the federal level, there are some good elected officials. They have good hearts. They mean well. They don't have, they're not using the government to come in and twist it and turn it for manipulation and for their own motives. That's what I want. Please don't run for office if that's what you want to do. <laughs> I beg you not to do that. We don't need, and then, then at the same breath you're going to holler, we the blackest city. But, you're manipulating your own people and trying to twist and turn things that you can't, you don't have the power to do so. So it's like, does it really matter to you that we're the blackest city? Then what are you doing for your black people? How is this helpful to us to be in a position where we're on the news and, and your mayor is suing, using your tax dollars to sue the council? I mean, it is the most absurd thing <laughs> that I've ever heard. How are you helping the people? Do you realize you're hurting the people? It's not helping us when you sue the city or the county. Those are our tax dollars. <laughs> I don't want my tax dollars tied up in litigation. And I don't think any of you want that either. I know you don't. So I personally feel like... If they want to sue each other, they need to pay for it. I don't want to pay for that. And I can guarantee you, if that becomes the case, they won't be suing each other. I bet you all of they will figure out a way how to work together. See, because that's a knee-jerk reaction. I'm just suing you. I can't have my way. I can't do what I want to do. I'm going to just sue you. And do what? Under what basis? <laughs> That I don't know what income he's using to sue somebody with. And that's what we do. We do need to find out from the city manager. When he decides to sue, who's paying for that? Who, who's paying for that? We should be concerned. You know that happened before 
where you had the council member, she was suing everybody. Y'all do know y'all pay for that. I, 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 I said I wasn't going to be long, and I've got like 40-something seconds. But we've got to get back <laughs> to a place where we're having these intelligent, engaged conversations. Now, I, you know, I can't go back and forth with y'all because... It's hard for me to talk and type at the same time. So at least now with the new format, I can see most of the comments. Um, and I'm not saying you got to get on here and we got to agree. But what I am asking is, you know, provide some facts. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, then provide factual basis and information to support what you're saying. Because what I'm telling you all right now is not, is it was on the news. I just got, I've got all kinds of links to the mayor's press release when he's telling the media he's suing the city council. Now my question is, with whose money? We should all be asking the city manager who's paying for these lawsuits. And we should be demanding that if he wants to just take it upon himself, if he is not acting on behalf of constituents, then he needs to pay for that. Bottom line. You want to sue somebody, you pay for it with your attorney because you don't have a P-card no more, so you need to pay for it. Don't get in government and use the government's money this way. It is just frivolous and it's stupid. I mean, I'm, I, I just hate to say it that blunt, but this, y'all, is what I mean by knee-jerk reactions, a lack of experience, and not being accountable for actions that cause us to be in a position where we're causing the city to be looked at as we don't have people in office that understand their position. So Tory says the mayor stated in his press conference that he reached out to council to settle their differences in the beginning of what? Do you believe that to be true? I'm not sure, but I, if I were you, I would op I would ask for an open records request so that you can find out if you believe it, because that's how you're going to find that out. The division is making us look bad as a city, and the people are tired. I agree with you. I haven't listened to his press conference in its entirety, but I'm telling you all how to confirm and verify the information. So I'll give you a tip on if it were me, and if this is what I wanted to know, because I haven't listened to all of the press release. Um, but I would op send in an open records request to ask for all email correspondence between the mayor and the council where he has asked the council to set their, their differences. Now that can be very broad because there could be a lot of differences. And when he says in the beginning, my question is in the beginning of what? Um, what is he referring to? And I think oftentimes things that are discussed in executive session, that's not public information anyway. That's why it's executive session. So that's how I think you'll get that answer. But I agree with the last statement that the division is making us look bad. It has never been this bad before. I mean, there was some bickering going on before, and we didn't like that either. And that's going to ha happen. I think conflict healthy conflict can help people reach a place of understanding that's where we should that's where the council and the mayor should be reaching a level in my opinion of healthy conflict resolution and conversation <coughs> i don't shy away from conflict my husband will tell you that i want to talk about it let's put it out on the table because anytime you have an issue that's unresolved, it grows and it festers. And so I really feel like we need our council and or the mayor. But now if you have a mayor or let's just say you have a council member that just, you know, I'm just because I haven't, my differences haven't been settled. I'm going to just go to the media. Then here lies the problem. Here lies the problem. We can't just run to the media. For what? <coughs> the public can't help you settle your differences and issues. Anyway, I'm getting hot. I need water. <coughs> I'll come back.
We'll have more discussion. Stay tuned.